We're in Hong Kong by the harbour, filming the next episode of 852 Reboot Hong Kong. And we're here to talk about the ocean with Doug Woodring, founder and managing director of the Ocean Recovery Alliance. So over to you, Doug. There we go. Napoleon, thank you for having me. 852. 852, Hong Kong. We've got eight questions. Sorry, eight minutes, five questions and two plugs. Let's start with question one. You're not originally from Hong Kong, so what brought you to Hong Kong? Well, I have to say that on a day like today, this is what brought me here. Uh, I used to live in Japan. I'm from California, and I like the outdoors. I like water sports and the mountains, and coming here was like Club Med with a uh, New York vibe to it. So you could get business done and you could go out. I often joke that it's called Honolulu, so it's like New York and Hawaii put together in Asia and not a lot of people think of the Hawaii part. And okay, the water is not perfectly clear, but it's warm most of the year. There's islands, there's waves, and great terrain, almost like Rio. So there's, there's not many cities like this. And what I like about you is that, um, like me, you started in the kind of tech world, in the startup world, back in the early days, the dot-com boom days. And then I suddenly saw you on a beach teaching people how to swim in the ocean. <laughs> and now you're here to, you know, help this this ailing sea behind us recover so maybe maybe you can tell us just how you transitioned you know from the kind of startup world into a non-profit world well that's good that's a good uh, maybe I can explain what I do so I run a, the NGO Ocean Recovery Alliance it's based here in California but we really do global work but people say are you an activist and I say no I'm not an activist I'm an actionist but I, really what I am is an environmental entrepreneur. I just like to make programs and things happen. So the startup days were the, the make money or try to make a project. And now uh, when I moved to Asia, the first thing I said to myself was, look how polluted this is with the air and the water. And this was more than 20 years ago. It seemed like people weren't really focused on that. So the last 10 years of running this NGO, I'm basically entrepreneuring programs just like startups, but not to sell anything. Uh, we try to sell it to the society or to the edu for education for businesses, but we're selling the story of the cause, which is appreciate, protect our waters more. And the challenge with that is like a startup, you have to raise money, you have to find someone to fund it, you have to find the audience, you have to get it approved. So it's a similar, just like a startup, except the challenge is we're not selling something to make a revenue Ongoing but in a way, I see, you, I see you a bit like you're a bit like an accelerator program, right? You know, there's a mad rash of accelerator programs around the world, and basically they're doing what you're doing. You you nurture an idea, a program, you bring somebody in to run it, you fund right. it, you get it, you distribute it, you find partners. Right. So and tell us a bit. The dots. Yeah. Tell us yeah. a bit about um, the role of Hong Kong in this whole non-profit world. Why do you why do you see Hong Kong being such a good base? <laughs> I know you're you're always in the air, but Hong Kong is your home. Yeah, no, that's a great question. And uh, some people said, why are you doing this here and not in California or somewhere? My, one of the answers is, well, California is already clean. There's already plenty of NGOs there doing it. We, it turns out, uh, having done what I'm doing here, we're one of the only NGOs in the world that's been doing plastic pollution on a global level. Mm -hmm. There's plenty who do it locally for their own beach and their waterways, great work, but they often don't think about cross-border. We're the one and only ones who've been doing it who doesn't live in the West. All have come from Europe or the US and they still don't really live in Asia. This is where all the things are happening. The growth is happening, the lack of education is here, the lack of focus on waste management. So it's hard to raise money here because it's uh, family offices and philanthropies don't care so much about the environment. The corporates have a budget maybe only for Hong Kong, but they don't think regionally. They don't think globally for a solution because that's at the head office. But every corporate in the world has an office in Hong Kong, or at least many of them do. And it's super efficient to go meet a couple of the right people here and get to their uh, headquarter offices in the US or Europe or Australia, or wherever, without having to fly all around the world. So in some ways, it's actually great to be here and navigate those channels with uh, with those uh, community of stakeholders. And do you find the, I mean, in the West, there's a big awareness, right? Because we're kind of, the, the, the argument is we're developed, you know, now we have the time and the money to care about fixing the planet. 
do you find you know there's a lot of resistance here from the kind of the fact that these are countries that are developing and the the last thing they you know on their mind is oh my god we've got to fix the waters i mean is is the attention moving that direction or where do you yeah. see that the last year and a half it really shifted so yeah. before it was that feeling that we're not quite ready yet that's not our priority maybe air pollution but not really the water the people don't use the beach they don't like the sun there's a lot of social reasons why the ocean plastic hasn't been on the agenda. But now it's so big in the press. Thailand closed their main beach. Boracay was closed in the Philippines. The leaders of these countries have woken up and said, wow, if we don't fix this, it's gonna impact tourism. People from Hong Kong won't go, Japan, China. And now it's uh, almost as common as a climate change discussion. So there are com countries that are really moving fast to ban single-use plastic bags and you know, straws or wasteful material and trying to figure out how to now catalyze investment, which is so needed in waste management and recycling capacity around this entire region. And that's a big opportunity. And then, so you use Hong Kong mainly as a fundraising, kind of marketing uh, base, or is it where you actually get the people to help you run these projects? Because you're doing, as you uh, said, you're doing a little the bit globe, of each. Right? Uh, we do a lot of our projects now outside of Hong Kong uh, yeah. because I could make a huge impact in Cambodia and other countries where they're very interested and eager and they haven't had solutions. Uh, sometimes the funding comes from here and some of the help, but we also have people in other countries helping. So it's, it's just a good base to be in the center of everything and, and move around from. And where can people find you? What's the domain name? So we have a few domains, but one is Ocean Recovery Alliance. Yeah. Uh, we run a forum called Plasticity, which is all about second life plastic and yeah. innovation solution. We just had it at the UN headquarters in Bangkok last week. That's been going eight years now. Very nice. You've got two plugs now. We're running out of time. So Global Alert. First plug. Is, uh, Global alert. It's like ways for traffic, but you can report trash hotspots anywhere in the world's waters. Okay. So and that's if you an app, can't, right? It's you an download app. an app, okay. And uh, it's in Spanish and English. We hope to get it into Bahasa. Okay. And when you see trash in the water, not one piece, but big areas yeah. by the coastline and the rivers, mainly the rivers, because the world still doesn't focus on the outflow of the creeks and the okay. rivers yet. The estuaries. And, and then that. with this app, anyone in the world can manage, better manage their watershed and put up booms and nets and catchments to at least slow the flow. And how many, is that being adopted? How many people are using uh, it? We've had 40 countries nice. using it, but the point is we need to link the stakeholders who take the images with the people who take care of the watersheds and Plug that's the next two. start. Uh, plug number two is go see our whale. We just launched Skyscraper, which is an 11 meter tall whale made of plastic from the North Pacific Gyre. We brought the whale from Europe and it's a huge sculpture. It's now at the Marina Bay Sands. What's a whale made out of? touring Asia for the next 18 months. It's made out of plastic, plastic. big plastic pieces. Nice. The entire sculpture with the counterbalance is 20 tons. Is so it it's coming to Hong beautiful. Kong? Beautiful. It might be coming. Might be coming. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Thank you very much, Doug.